Welcome to this special episode of CP News Watch. I'm Terry Theodore, the BC and Yukon News Editor for the Canadian Press. Canada's fastest growing age group may come as a surprise to some people. Reaching the age of 100 is still uncommon, but since the year 2000, the number of centenarians in Canada has more than tripled. This week, the Canadian press published a series of stories looking at the joys, challenges, and science of life beyond 100, which you can read about on our website, thecanadianpressnews.ca. Joining me now are the Canadian press reporters on this series, Lindsay Armstrong, Brianna Charlebois, and Ritika Dubay, for a discussion about the rise of Canada's super-ager population. Hello, everyone. Let's start with Brianna. Uh, what sparked your interest in centenarians? It's hard not to notice in Canada that we are an aging population, and I think COVID kind of brought that into focus. And a lot of us, like myself, have uh, grandparents that over are over 100 years old. Um, and then some of the data that you mentioned off the top, Terry, uh, is sort of what sparked our interest. Um, Statistics Canada data shows that the country's population um, of people over 100 went from 3,400 in 2000 to nearly 12,000 in 2023. So we started looking into this phenomenon, talking to experts and talking to centenarians themselves. And then uh, somewhat serendipitously this week, uh, Statistics Canada released new data that sort of reinforced some of that. Um, some of the things that we hearing from both experts and the centenarians themselves. Um, and so new data released this week predicts that the centenarian population will reach more than 106,000 by 2073. Well, just, uh, and you mentioned this, just so our listeners and readers are aware, uh, Brie, your grandmother was one of the people who we spoke with. She's 105 and lives in Ontario, right? She does. She does. And Ritika actually went up and interviewed her and went and visited her. And I even learned some new things about her. She said her most prized possession is a mink coat. And that was something I had never heard about before. So that was uh, that was pretty exciting to learn myself. Um, but then I also was able to go and, and interview three different centenarians and learn a lot about, um, you know, how vibrant their lives are at that age. Um, obviously, it comes with some some pros and cons, like some people do have dementia and they struggle with that and there are some falls, but people really have uh, have really vibrant lives. And I think Lindsay will will speak to that a little bit more in her in her portion. But yeah, it was pretty awesome. OK, so Ritika went to speak to your grandmother. Uh, Ritika, some of the takeaways from that conversation with her. 105, right? She's 105. She's 105, Angeline. And a uh, my first takeaway was I was mesmerized with her positivity. She was, you know, way outgoing. She was willing to tell her story. And, and if you met her, you wouldn't be able to tell that she's 105. Like she looked like she's not a day older than 80. Like that's how amazing she was. Like when I came back, I couldn't stop talking about her for the whole week. Every person I met, I told her, told them like, I met this 105 year old woman and she's amazing. She keeps herself busy. Um, she plans her days in advance, um, goes out to play cards with her friends, bakes during the weekend. She knits, quilts, play cards. She took up knitting when she was 100, uh, when she turned 100. And she's always smiling and positive. Like She has this will to keep going. She doesn't think she's old. She, th she thinks she's getting older, but she doesn't think she's old. And, and I just could not get enough of that positivity. And, and that's something I've noticed among all the people I've interviewed. So um, Angeline was only the, the only centenarian I interviewed for my piece about finances, but people in their 90s also had the same level of positivity and and this will to keep going, even, even if they don't have enough money or if they are really rich in their, in their lives. No matter what the situation is, they just know how to keep going. And and I think we should remember that these are the people who've gone through the Second World War. They've seen the Great Depression. So they've seen a lot in their lives and, and they just have a way to, to have, a, have a positive outlook and, and keep moving forward. Well, that's one of the things that you talked about earlier is how, you know, we only plan to when we retire, maybe 20, 30, 40 years is not something I think people plan for. Uh, and, and, 
suddenly they have to they need another decade on you know whatever that is money finances where they're going to live you looked into that issue right yes i did so centenarians at this point have already lived at least 30 to 40 years of their retirement and this is something they did not plan for um the the good part here is that the centenarians right now are not facing any financial hurdles because most of the people who worked back in the day uh, and retired in like the early 2000s or late 1990s have um the defined benefit pension plan so defined benefit pension plan comes from your employers and at that time it was a popular thing to have you know and workers also stayed at the job longer so they benefited from that kind of pension plan and on top of that you have the Canada pension plan, old age security, all of that combined and also adjusted to inflation every year kind of kept them going. Even if they don't have a lot of money saved, they will they still have enough to keep going even past the age of 100. So they're not really struggling financially, at least among the people I spoke to. But even for other people in their 90s and 100s, they have money to keep going. OK, but how do we plan to live to 100, especially if, you know, you look at those stats, Canada numbers, how do we plan for that as, uh, these days? Yeah, so that is something that came up a lot. And uh, you also have to remember that healthcare concerns are a big issue. So the longer you live, there you're more likely to have um, healthcare concerns. You might have to go into long-term care. And that's when the financial planning gets a little complicated. So first of all, um, the financial planners that I spoke to think that workers need to keep working longer. So you cannot really afford to retire at 65. And and even people, the centenarians I, centenarians I spoke to think that retiring at 65 does not really make sense anymore. If they could, they would have worked longer. And that is something um to across the board so you might have to work longer to to keep up with the expenses you might see in the next 30 to 40 year, years that that is to come and then instead of thinking that your benchmark age should be 80 because your parents passed at 80 is not true anymore so a financial planner i talked to said that he always pushes his clients to put the benchmark age for retirement at 100 so even when you are going to die, let's say at 85, you still have money to keep going and you don't know what kind of expenses are waiting for you. It can be retirement home, long-term care homes. It can be anything that can happen and you might have not planned for that. So it's very important to keep that in mind. Um, one more thing that the financial plan has brought up was diversify your investments. So not just relying on the Canada Pension Plan or the old age security or the re registered retirement savings. You also have to look at other kind of investments. So there was this 93 year old man I interviewed, he lives in a retirement home. And what he did is, is he has lent money to his grandchildren so that they could buy homes. So instead of his grandchildren taking money out of the banks as a mortgage, he is the bank. And he has lent money to his grandchildren so they could build home and, and keep returning the money, like keep paying him back. And this 93-year-old man is now reinvesting that money somewhere else. And he says that even if he lives to 110, 110 I don't think he will run out of money. Genius, genius. Well, and you talked about people working longer. We don't know, you know, how long we're going to live. and But it feels like these people wouldn't retire at age 65 anyway. They seem to have so much energy. Uh, and Lindsay, I know you did uh, worked on the concept of super ager, uh, yeah. you know, and, and it, it was all about energy. It really feels like these, these people have so much energy. What puts a super ager into that category? So a super ager I learned is anyone over the age of 80 that has the memory and sort of cognitive uh, health of somebody 20 to 30 years younger. So these are the centenarians that that are more like 80 year olds perhaps. And this is actually reinforced by brain scans and MRIs and these super agers that are studied in, in North America their brains look a lot more like those of people 20 to 30 years younger than them. They have different, uh, yeah, different sort of aging. And it, it often means that they are 
uh, very social, very active. Um, most of them are, are big readers. And so super agers is this sort of uh, phenomenon then in talking to, to researchers about it while they can't be sure without doing that cognitive test. Sounds like a lot of the, the, the centenarians interviewed in our series are probably super agers based on their activity, their memory. And um, yeah, they're a very, very special group. Finally, Lindsay, what do scientists know about how it is people make it to 100 years old? Well, there, there's much that scientists still don't know. And there's some pieces that um, are perhaps a bit bit sort of obvious. We know that healthy uh, sleep habits and keeping mobile and moving and all those things are, are very helpful to, to ensuring longevity. Um, but beyond that, there is actually something going on in their brains that that makes super agers um, different. And, and scientists have, have sort of started to hypothesize why, and they've looked at brain scans of these super agers, and they find that there's actually a part of the brain um, that is more robust than even people much younger than them. And this part of the brain uh, has an excess of something called von economo neurons in some cases. And there's still really, really early research into this, but um, in animals, those neurons are associated with herd behavior, pod behavior. They've been researched more heavily in whales and elephants than they have in people. Um, but they are finding this sort of consistent evidence that super agers have these really, really robust um, von economo neurons that perhaps mean that their social um, their social lives are really important. And that's come up um, among the researchers who, who we spoke with for the series. Angela Roberts has uh, talked to hundreds of centenarians, and she says that something comes up uh, something that has come up is that they're all very social. They care a great deal about their connections. Um, they may not have huge friend groups, but they have people in their lives that they're very close to that they keep up with on a regular basis. And those um, deep sort of in-person emotional social connections are really, really important. And that may be what's uh, contributing to their healthy long lives. And, and um Beyond that, something that she mentioned that uh, I thought was so interesting, and there may not be the biology to back it up, but almost all of the centenarians in, not the centenarians, sorry, almost all of the super agers involved in her study have shared that they are curious, that they love to read, that they love to follow the news, that they love to learn, um, play new instruments, um, try new hobbies, thinking about um, Angeline picking up knitting at 100, and um, a man in New Brunswick that I spoke to, George. Cooper, who turned 100 this past spring, um, at 99, he decided he would build himself a cello for the first time and learn how to play, along with the other six instruments that he plays. And so having these um, hobbies and having this curiosity and this real excitement for life seems to be a, a trend and something that is is across a, a lot of super agers. Amazing. So they obviously have a plan when they wake up every morning. Um, one of the things that I uh, took away from this during our meetings and, you know, when the reporter would come back uh, after an interview with one of these super agers or, you know, these people past 100, uh, was how excited they were and how much they loved doing this interview. And these people just seem to have this, they, I mean, you guys came back just, you know, bursting with, with the stories about them. Do you, uh, Bree, do you have some thoughts about some of the people who you interviewed? What were the takeaways from those people? Yeah. I mean, I thought that they were amazing. Um, I, I interviewed someone from Whitehorse, someone from Hamilton, and then someone here in BC. So in BC, I was able to go and actually visit um, the centenarian Two of them were World War II vets and had very lively uh, conversations with them about that because D-Day was just around the corner at the time that I was interviewing them. Um, I want to give a special shout out to our colleague, Nono Shen, who also did a lot of legwork talking to centenarians. And um, one that really struck me and was the lead in the story that I wrote was uh, this woman from West Vancouver who still does yoga and she still goes to history lectures and the things that Lindsay was sort of mentioning very much she exudes. Um, but they were they were lovely. It's these people with super vibrant lives who like are willing to share it. And some of them, yeah, as as Ritika said, you don't even you can't even tell that they're they're a day past 80. So I, I'm very used to being around someone who who is like that. Um, my grandmother really doesn't my whole life. She's 
right. she's the exact same. She's looked the same. Um, but it was exciting to be able to learn things um, from from their pieces as well um, about my own my own family. But um, <laughs> but, but uh, just you know, listening to to these lives of these people who who are, are so unassuming, and you wouldn't you wouldn't imagine they they live such bright lives. But well, we probably wouldn't even guess that they were a hundred. Ritika, you said something like that earlier. What about some of the people you? One of the people, and and this man is eighty four. He is the financial planner. He's still working. He does not want to retire. And I asked him, like, what keeps you bringing to work every day? Like, what, what what's keeping you going? And he said, he has found a social circle among his clients, and his clients are older than him. His oldest client is one hundred and three. And people who are like 90, 95 are still working with their own money, with their own finances. I think super agers have this very positive attitude towards life. They want to have a meaningful life. They want to contribute to society. They want to connect with others and just want to keep going. The retirement does not, does not ring a bell to them. Like it's right. something they connect to. Um, the one thing, the one aspect that that Bree brought up uh, or that Bill Hamill on the Sunshine Coast talked about was loneliness. And these are things we didn't talk about a little bit. But I mean, a lot of their uh, family members have died. Their spouses have died. Um, uh, Bree, do you want to talk a little bit about that before we wrap up? Sure. Yeah. Um, I think there, obviously, we've talked a lot about the pros and how amazing these people are, but there are some drawbacks. Um Bill even told me that, you know, there are some days that he doesn't uh, speak to a person, which broke my heart. Um, his daughter does check on him every day. She did uh, tell me that they live in a duplex and she lives at the upstairs apartment. He lives in the downstairs apartment. And um, that allows for independence. And he's pretty amazing. Still cooks and walks and um, is cognitively there completely. Um, but something that, you know, I talked to a lot of experts for my story, which was was sort of about these pros and cons. And I spoke to a geographer, a sociologist who, you know, spent 40 years studying aging and, and medical professionals as well. And all of them, it struck me, had sort of said, you know, this is something that we've known. Um, the statistics kind of that we mentioned off the top also exemplify that. This is something we've known. And um, Anne Martin Matthews, who's a sociologist, um, who is the sociologist who studied aging, said that, you know, her entire 40 year career, they have been telling the government that this is this is a problem. Um, the geographer I spoke with, Mark Rosenberg, sort of told me a couple other issues that we are preparing for is, you know, housing. There are two types of housing currently for for this demographic. Either they stay in their homes like Bill um, or or they live in long term care. Um, so those options aren't great because there's not enough uh capacity at a lot of these long-term care centers. And then, you know, living alone does put burdens on their their children, often who are aging and are often seniors um, themselves. So this might be a good time to play uh, the clip from, from Mark. Uh, he sort of uh, exemplifies it really well. People ought to really take this seriously for themselves and try and prepare the best that they can, both health-wise and financially. And I'm not sure a lot of older people or middle-aged people realize what they're going to be facing. And, and secondly, the optimist in me uh, would like to think that our governments are finally going to start to realize that they need to take this issue much more seriously and invest in programs both around housing and around supporting people who are going to be caregivers in ways that we simply aren't doing right now. So the takeaway from this is uh, we need to start planning and great work on this series. Uh, really well done. Um, thank you. The Canadian press reporters, Lindsay Armstrong, Brianna Charlebois, Ritika Dubé for all joining me. I really appreciate the conversation. Just a reminder, you can read the entire series right now and even watch video of some of the people who we spoke with on our website, thecanadianpressnews.ca. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to follow and subscribe. For more of today's top stories, visit thecanadianpressnews.ca.